The Realm Tree. Episode 22, Scars That Stay. Thanks for your patience. We examined your son's injuries and decided to route some simple biomancy into them. Those wounds patch themselves up without an issue. Headaches and fatigue are normal after this amount of biomancy on someone so young. We recommend bed rest, hydration, and cutting back on physical activity for the next few weeks. Basically, your son's going to be just fine. Thank you so much, Dr. Demeter and Dr. Demeter for everything you've done. You're truly the best doctors in the spring realm. We're really not exceptional. We're just doing our part. And first names are totally fine. Right. Of course. Verdon. Alpine. Thank you so much. Hey, what are you still doing talking to us? Go get your son home. Right. Right. Thanks again. Truly. <sighs> That's the last of them. Long day, huh, hon? They're all long. Our jewels aren't meant to take on this much healing. It'll be a relief when Daisy gets back and can help out. Not that she has to. Of course. Can't <laughs> make her do it or anything. But a day off would be nice. Or a weekend. Maybe a little vacation? Just the two of us? <gasps> what was that? Sounds like it came from the back. Haha! <laughs> we can move again! And there's flowers everywhere! Ugh, oh, Rondell, how do you always end up falling on top of someone? I don't know. Nadine, explain with science. Probably, Probably just, just the, the greater, greater surface, surface area. area. Wow, he asked me. Oh, so I'm not allowed to talk now? Cease this bickering at once! Where are we? It's certainly picturesque. We're back home in the spring realm. How exactly did we get here? It was a combination of space and shadow magic through Van der Gray's ability to create and transport pocket dimensions. Oh, hello, Professor. Miss Cole. Hey, geezer. Miss Glaze. Everyone, everyone! Mercury's alive but still hurt. Whatever my dad's crown did, the bleeding is really bad. Already on it! It's a deep cut, but my jewel's got full power. Daisy, Daisy, is that you? Am I hallucinating? Not unless I'm hallucinating too. Oh, and you have wings. Cute little bumblebee wings. Whoa! Hey, Mom! Hey, Dad! What are the chances we get warped into your yard? I was aiming for a clearing nearby, but I missed. Sorry. This place is still quite remote. Thank you, Vanda. Whew. We got lucky then. My folks are the best. Sorry to show up in such dire circumstances, Mr. and Mrs. Demeter. Oh, my Talia. Look at you. We're just happy to see you both safe. You have a lot to fill us in on, but let's get your friend taken care of first. Thank you so much. Anytime. Daisy, keep him stable. We might need you to make sure the stitches stay closed after we apply them. Aye, aye, Mom. Let's get you all inside. I'm counting... 16 fairies. I'll prep an upper room for the wounded one. Jinx, where are the other beasts? Were they sucked into the portal too? They're here. Fortuna's invisibility magic is keeping them hidden. I'll stay here with them. You worry about Mercury. Right. The Demeter house was exactly as I remembered it. They were local healers who either took walk-in patients or went themselves to make house calls. It was a big two-story home in the middle of a lush forest and they even had an apple orchard in the back. Even with all the time I spent here as a kid, I never saw anyone being operated on before. This wasn't like Daisy's healing of cuts and broken bones. The wound was too deep. Magic wasn't enough. They needed metal tools and stitches. I left the room when they said he would need a skin graft to totally close the slash across his chest. I exited into the upper floor of their house. I could hear Professor Doherty talking on the other side of the door to the wingless fairy called Vander Gray, Sai's father. You brought me on board to save my daughter, and you were too late for that. Why am I even here? I'm truly sorry, Vander. With all my heart, I wish Sai wasn't among the dead. It's funny, isn't it? And it's sad. Pathetic way. I lost my son and my wife. Now, Sai. And there are gods out there. There are cruel ones and they're laughing. I didn't even realize I had almost pressed my ear to the door. I continued on, more and more conscious of my heart pounding in my chest. I came down the stairs to see my team waiting for me. Nadine was hovering on her new moth wings, but touched the ground when I approached. Hello, Talia. There she is. What's the word of Mercury? He'll be okay, but they need more time. What's been going on out here? Everyone's kinda all over the place. 
but we're staying inside to keep hidden. Sunshine's team, or I guess former team, took over the kitchen and are cooking for everyone. I was telling these two that the crown your father was wearing seemed to contain powerful spells. It sounded like you knew about it. Yeah. It's called the Debtor's Crown. While my mom sang lullabies, my dad would read bedtime stories about history and weapons. Certainly sounds in character for that brooding asshole. Uh, if that was insensitive given the circumstances, I'm, I'm sorry. It's fine. All I know about it is that it was said to be a lost weapon from an era of chaos, before the Six Realms and even before the monarchy. But with how much the Council has lied to everyone, I'm kind of questioning if it was really an era of chaos back then. Regardless, if that's something the Council casually possesses, this confirms all our conspiracy theories. The beasts, the jewel hunters, the test itself. All of it was orchestrated by the Council to train loyal soldiers and acquire jewels. What the hell, man? Everything we did was just playing into the hands of the fairies trying to use us. Or take us apart into little pieces. Not everything. We managed to escape them thanks to Professor Doherty and his crew. Our getaway surely messed with whatever they were trying to accomplish. I guess we're fugitives, huh gang? Looks like it. Fugitives from the whole Council. Bet our families are worried too. Can we contact them? Maybe. The professor said he'd go over everything with us in a bit. Not sure where he got off to. He was talking to Sai's dad upstairs. Oh, that's who that guy is! I thought something about him was familiar. Hey, a team! Daisy waved to us from the top of the stairs. Our pretty boy is awake now. Anyone want to say hi? We all crowded around Mercury in his bed, Daisy's parents leaving us alone with him. The bed had supports for his outstretched dragonfly wings. He looked much better, but his chest still had bandages and stitches in the red slash across it. Hey guys. Hey. Hello. You gave us quite a scare, mate. I gave myself a scare. Talia, when I grabbed your dad's arm, I felt the jewels sewn into his skin. From there, it all fell into place. I knew who was pulling the strings behind the jewel collection and the murder of fairies. I can't believe I thought it was Sai. This was all my father. Him and the council. I always knew General Avalon and the military did terrible things. This is beyond the scope of what I'd imagined. I feel ashamed for trying to join as a soldier. You needed to take care of your family. I don't think anyone would blame you before blaming the world we live in. Especially since you didn't know. I still knew some of it. Locking up innocence, brutality towards their own people. I was complacent in all that. My morals might as well be hollow. They're not. Don't talk like that. Mercury, you stuck up for me back there, and that got you hurt. And I'm so sorry. Blame me, if anything. It's my dad, after all. Oh, for crying out loud, stop being down on yourselves about this. This isn't a competition over whose life is more unfortunate. <sighs> oh, seriously, I've been traveling with you guys for almost a month, and I haven't met anyone like you two before. You're both so talented and awesome, but you bully yourselves all the time. When things get bad, how come you blame yourselves and not the fairies who've been messing with you? The two of you are not responsible for the actions of the council. Guys, Talia and Mercury come from rough family situations. This is who they've had to become to survive. Daisy, I'm sorry, but I don't need you analyzing me right now. Okay. Sorry, Tal. No. She's right, Talia. They all are. You and I see the danger of self-cruelty in each other, but see it as a necessary part of ourselves. Look. If you hate yourself, but everyone else loves you, numbers show you're better than you think you are. It's just math. And it's not productive. If we made mistakes, let's focus on fixing them. Alright. Yeah. Good points. For now, can we just show our injured teammates some kindness? <laughs> sure. I gently wrapped my arms around Mercury, trying not to make him bend his torso. I hugged him as hard as I could. I'm so glad you're okay. I can't lose you too, idiot. I'm not going anywhere. Hey, I think all you guys were wrong about something. And what's that? You keep saying Daisy gives the best hugs, but Talia's always the first to hug you after you almost die. And she's on the verge of tears, so you know she cares. Hey, you know, he might have a point. I want a Talia death hug. It's great, but not worth almost dying for. Well, I'm glad I give good hugs. Me too. Nobody mentioned how my father said I wasn't a fairy and I was glad for that. Every fairy with us crowded into the sizable living room of the Demeter household, sitting on the floor, cushions, and sofa. Fair and Fortuna were outside in the forest with Jinx, trying to lay low. Fortuna's invisibility magic made it much easier. 
Daisy sat with her parents while Gardenia sat behind her and braided her long blonde hair. Nicholas Christel stood against a wall by himself, while Cedar Rose and Hazel Lucent passed some fresh apple turnovers around. Mercury sat by me after I helped into a seat. Professor Doherty and his Autumn Realm assistant stood up front to address all of us. Vander Gray was absent. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. First of all, I'm relieved you're all safe and we were able to transport you away from the Realm Tree. I'm sure you have a multitude of questions, so please let us begin to fill you in. As you all know, other than perhaps the Doctor's Demeter, who I thank again for their hospitality. I am Professor Ignatius Doherty, academic, school teacher, and Winter Realm Council representative. Or former representative, as the case may be. Yes, I was getting to that. I'm the odd man out in this scheme of theirs. Seemed like they thought I'd just be too doddering to interfere. Prove them wrong. <laughs> anyway, this is my assistant, Kai Severa. He's an accomplished researcher and terramancer. Hello, I'm the Stonehands guy. That was me. Whoa. The other gentleman with us is Van der Grey. He went off to patrol the perimeter. We were talking and we want him to know how highly we thought of his daughter. Is there a chance her team members could speak to him? Company might be good for him. Yes, I'll mention it. Thank you, Professor. Does whatever we're going to talk about involve finding and taking out Jonathan Hale? Or stopping the council from farming the lives of teenage fairies? It does. I'll jump to the point. We are a coalition of the only fairies who truly know the atrocities the council has committed. Therefore, it is our responsibility to unseat the council, stop their jewel harvesting, and finally, drop the barriers separating each of the six realms. Honey... Did he just say what I thought he said? I believe so. It sounds quite radical, but these are special times. Lives are at risk. Those around the realms, and likely the young fairies left within the tree as well, could have their jewels and lives taken from them. Stopping the council's jewel harvesting and murdering, sure, I get it. What exactly does dropping the barriers have to do with anything? Well, I was hoping Vander would be here to explain this part. As a wingless fairy, it's most relevant to him. I'll handle it, Professor. The barriers between each realm not only divide us, but also give winged fairies immense privilege over others. We can simply fly between realms while others are restricted to certain times of the year. Our world is no friend to the wingless. So perhaps we could find allies. We need everyone we can muster, because challenging the Council means challenging Kent Avalon. And the entire military. Correct. And whatever ancient weapons they have under their control. Cassius Wick's crown is likely not the only one. If we can gain allies who have long opposed social division under the Council, it should be much easier to stop their plans. So, one step in stopping their plans is dropping the barriers and giving them more fairies than just us to deal with. Causing a little trouble for them. <laughs> okay, I'm with ya. But how do we get rid of the barriers? Professor Doherty unhooked a necklace from around his collar, showing us the white stone embedded in it. Each council member can drop the barriers adjacent to their realm. We hold a fragment of our territory's realm crystal, letting us use its magic to raise and drop the barriers at will. Interesting. What exactly is a realm crystal? We learned about it from the beast. Each realm has a huge jewel as a source of their magic. Our jewels form based on the crystal we're born the closest to. It doesn't actually have to do with genetics. Indeed. It's a very well-kept secret I didn't know until I joined the council myself. When a fairy joins the council, they receive a fragment of a realm crystal in a necklace like this. Think of it as a key for the barriers around our realms. We are the guardians in a way. I can drop the magic of the Winter Realm's barrier right now just through force of desire, but without the adjacent realm's barriers dropping as well, it won't make a difference. Too many other walls will be standing. We need all the keys. Then we either need to steal them... Or beat up the council until they give us their fragments. It always comes down to violence. So, ideally, we isolate the council members, steal their fragments to drop the barriers and cause chaos, kill them if necessary. Then, hopefully, stop whatever they're doing by collecting all those jewels. I really hope we don't have to kill anyone. Need we be reminded that they're in league with the fairies who literally rip out the jewels of other fairies' backs? And leave them to die? I know, I know. On that note, that's a goal of theirs I haven't figured out just yet. The end game of their scheme. Yes, jewels possess magical power. 
but the council are already the most powerful fairies across the realms. I don't know why they would need to be stronger. Cassius Wick is too ambitious for such a simple end. Yeah, he is. Regardless of their goals, their methods involve mass murder and harm, so I am certain they must be stopped. Upending fairy society as we know it does sound extreme, but when they're the ones at the top, I can only see it as a necessity. We can make the Six Realms change for the better. Mom, Dad, so sorry for springing all this on you, and crash landing behind the house. I know it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. But we support you, sweetie. Always. Were we expecting company? Not at this hour. From a portal of darkness, Vander Gray materialized in the living room. Daisy jumped and we all quickly covered her mouth so she wouldn't yell. It's a day realm officer. All of you, hide. In a panic, we all scattered across the Demeter's home. Verd and Demeter shuffled as slow and loud as possible to the door while Alpine worked to hide people into the many rooms of the house. Honey, speak slowly and by his time. Still trying to hide the big ones. Ma'am, I don't know why you showed me towards a cupboard. From my hiding spot in an operation room, I saw Verdon slowly open the door for a day realm military officer. They were in battle gear from their arms to their wings. Evening, officer. Good evening. Sorry for the disturbance, but we've been told that this home is a potential place of interest for fugitives. I will begin searching it, as is my right under suspicion of criminality. Honey, what do you think? Can this nice fairy investigate our house? Why are you speaking so slowly? Better for my base. Muscles. Relieves tension. I suppose you're the doctors. This shouldn't take too long. What was that? All eyes turned to Rondell, whose folded beetle wings had just knocked over a vase as he tried shuffling behind a plant. Um, oops. Ingrid stepped out of her hiding place and fully into the officer's view. Her eyes glowed and a glazed over expression took over their face for a moment. That's strange. Where was I? Ah, yes. Investigating this home as a potential place of interest for fugitives. I will begin searching it, as it is my right under suspicion of criminality. Ingrid must have hypnotized the officer to see nothing out of the ordinary, considering he walked right past her, Rondell, and the vase. He wandered the house for about half an hour, looking straight through a few of us. Hmm. Can't seem to find anything unusual. If your daughter comes back, please let us know. A number of fairies her age have gone missing. Oh, Don, what a shame. Representative Lancaster is allowing us to monitor the realm. So we'll be around. Thank you both for your time. Of course. Happy to help in any way, officer. Goodbye. Whew, close call. <sighs> My bad, guys. Thanks for the save, Ingrid. Just glad we got out of that one. Miss Colt, your hypnotism has become so powerful. Thank you, Professor. We're lucky it was just one officer. I don't think I'd be able to distract two fairies looking around that intensely. This does bring up the question of where we're all going to hide. We can't just scatter like cockroaches every time there's a knock at the door. Leave that to me. I'll work on constructing an underground hideout. It would take about a week, if the Demeters are all right with that. Ooh, Mom, Dad, pretty please can we have a secret base under the house? Please? Well, if that can keep you safe and make you happy, absolutely. Yeah! I love you! Everyone stay safe and quiet until then. We may be here for a while. We may have wings, but I don't believe it's safe to begin our plan until the next equinox, when travel between realms is permitted for both the winged and the wingless. Let's see. The test started on the solstice. It's been three weeks since then, thanks to the Sovereign shortening the time limit, so we have just over two months until the equinox. Why is that our window? You saw how they're searching houses now. They're on high alert for us. When the military has to be spread thin watching both for winged fairies flying over barriers and wingless fairies crossing through the round tree, that's when we strike with a coordinated attack. This is more time to master your abilities. The professor and I will be helping all of you do so. And if you're at all worried about fairies left within the tree before the test ended, rest assured the professor and I are working on retrieving them with much more urgency. Understood. Two months it is. In the meantime, rest and prepare.
You've all grown so much during the trial. This is the time to sharpen our skills and plans and learn to work together as one. Training to save the world. That does sound kind of cool. My blade hungers for a good spar! <laughs> Woohoo! Let's get to work, everyone! You are so corny. Oh, ho, ho. I'm fancy and jealous of how happy you are. Burr, burr, burr. And one more thing, everyone. Even though the trial for your wings turned out rather insidious, please take the time to be proud of yourselves. I'm grateful to have all of you here and safe, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you all deserve those new wings of yours. As quickly as he entered to warn us, I saw Vandergrade disappear once again through a portal of shadow. I helped Mom and Dad get everyone set up for a few days of crowding in the house until Kai finished the underground base. Most of us would sleep in the basement, where we'd have the most time to hide if another officer showed up. After taking inventory of everyone with us, I realized we were the only full team of six. Everyone else had lost members somehow. Florence and Ingrid were right with each other, so I took time getting to know Gardania, Hazel, Lyndon, Cedar, and Nicholas. My brother was resistant to Lex's friendliness, so when I spotted him sitting by himself on the roof, I flew up behind him and punched him in the arm. Wah! What was that for? My friend's being nice to you and you're being a jerk. So? I don't know the guy. Look, I'm doing my part. I'm training, working on strategies. I don't know what else you people could want from me. Can I ask you something, Nick? Sure. Whatever. You miss sunshine, don't you? Don't be ridiculous. It's okay if you do. After everything she was willing to just ditch us? After everything that happened with Sai, she doesn't get to just walk away and pretend like her freaking last name is more important than her time with us. I saw it in her eyes up there. She keeps lying to herself. I'm gonna knock some sense into that girl. I'm gonna bring her back. I have something that might help with that. What do you mean? In the tree, I developed a new weapon. A bow that can fire elemental blasts. I used a mix of my cubes, a long spell equation, and some inspiration from your ice bullets. You did? Yeah, they were a big help. So feel free to turn me down, but I'd be happy to help you upgrade your powers in a similar way. You might even surpass me in combat abilities. Why would you help me? Uh, because maybe my team helped me realize that lifting each other up is more productive than trying to tear each other down or something. Imagine a cool new attack. Thunder bullets. Fire bullets. I changed my mind, let's get to work right now. Training was getting boring. I knew how to punch. I wanted to get better at terramancy. So I found Mr. Assistant Kai when he was constructing the underground base halfway through a tunnel. Yo, how goes the tunnel make? Hello, Mr. Stone. It's going exactly according to plan. No issues. Need the help of another Terramancer? It could speed things up, sure. Can you make another tunnel branch to the right? Yeah, that's easy. I stuck my fist into the ground, making the whole tunnel shake. It's rundown time! Whoa, easy man. I got this! Ooh! The tunnel ahead of us collapsed in on itself. Kai yanked me out of the ground and stopped the shaking with some big hand waves. Rondell, you can't power your way through magic like this. Don't force it. I need a few days to finish this place. But I think afterwards, you and I should find some time to work on our terramancy. No way! I just need to figure it out! I got this on my own! You could bet on that one. Rondell, I really think... and he's gone. Mercury and I would sit together in the woods out back as the sun set. It was strange seeing him walk around in an oversized white shirt with his wings poking out of his back and plain trousers. According to Daisy, he needed to give his injuries room to breathe. So, Talia Wick, the world's only fairy without a jewel, turns out to be something else entirely, huh? Guess so. I want to know what I am, but I can't just find my dad and beat the answers out of him. For now, I'm just gonna have to live as whatever I am. No wings and no powers other than the ones I borrow from Jinx. That hasn't stopped you before. Less has changed than you think, except for one thing. By the time I heal up, you might have to lead the way in our sparring. You don't need me to keep you sharp. I'm sure it's all just muscle memory. Once you're healed, you'll be zipping all over the place again. Perhaps. But it's nice to get stronger with someone. It makes all of this feel less lonely. You feel lonely even with all these fairies around? 
This is the most company we've had in weeks. Most I've had ever. I don't think many of them really empathize with me. That's what I mean. You're the exception. I think Daisy was right. We are who we are because of how we grow up. You and I didn't grow up complete. Yeah. You have your money issues, I don't have ours. On top of that, we both had some pretty unhelpful parents. And stuff to prove. That's putting it mildly. You know, I didn't realize it for a while, but for all my talk about wanting to help my family and nothing else, I was fighting as a street kid wanting to be seen. Are you worried about your family? I am. Sometimes I want to fly over there. Why don't you? Flex those cool dragonfly wings a little. It's too dangerous. If I get captured, I don't want you having to save me again. I feel like you've done that a lot. Well, you keep throwing yourself into things. <laughs> it's funny, I never thought we'd be the cocky ones of the group, but when it's time for a fight, we're pretty reckless. Little in over our heads. Like you said before, we know what it means to fight with something to prove. I guess we do. Mercury Chase. Ah! Hey, Fortuna. Hello, Talia. Sorry if we scared you. Oh, Fortuna, Jinx. You're invisible. <laughs> yep, not really a way for us to say hi without surprising you, sadly. I promised Fortuna I'd show her around, and fill her in on how things have changed in the past 2,000 years. And I'm happy to see any new scenery after all those years in the tree. But I'll be back on training our Paris tomorrow, so you better get your rest. You got it. Bye for now, everyone. Have fun. Farewell. See ya. We'll talk more later, okay? Okay. I could barely catch the shimmer in the air as Mercury led the unseen dragon through the forest. I started to head back through the woods as it got darker. I caught sight of Vander Gray's lanky figure heading towards the Demeter house as well. I ran to catch up and saw a gray-eyed face that hadn't slept in days. Hey, Mr. Gray. Oh, hello. Vander's fine. Vander, I'm Talia. I know who you are. Actually, my, my daughter spoke very highly of you since she was young, saving her life and all. She was too shy to approach you herself. Oh, really? I had no idea she was even around. She didn't always want to be seen. So, um, you and I haven't had a chance to talk about Sai. I was there when she died. I saw it all. I'm guessing her team filled you in? They did. Thank you. For all that you did for her. I'm not really sure how to express it. I... I would have lost her a long time ago if you didn't save her from drowning. I wanted to thank you myself so often back in the Night Realm, but I guess I... I never got around to it. It's okay. I just did what anyone would. Perhaps. But I really do think you're something else. Sai so saw it. And I trust her heart. Vander folded his arms and scratched idly at the dark hairs on them. My daughter and I have a lot in common. I had a lot in common. Ever since she lost her brother, I felt like there was something inside of her, under the surface, always screaming at an unfair world. When she got older, she said she would take the test for wings. She wouldn't take no for an answer. It might have been for closure, but sometimes I wonder if she just wanted to prove herself better than her hopeless tired old man, who failed his test long ago, got stuck in a dead-end job, barely scraped enough funds for her entry fee. I only knew Sai for a few weeks, and I didn't know her half as well as her team, but I don't think she took the test out of spite for you. Right, right. It, it's not logical of me to think so. When you're grieving, scared, you're not rational. You just want to survive and stop feeling this way. We want to think we're better than common animals, and yet, look at me. An old man ranting at a teenager. I'm sorry, Talia. It's okay. Grieving is important. I'm not an expert, but my best friend comes from a family of doctors. Taking care of your mind is just as important as taking care of your body. Yes, I suppose that's true. What do you need right now? I'll help if I can. Time? Company? Revenge against the council? No. I'm just barely old enough to know revenge is like a reflection of the moon on the water's surface. Stupid to chase, and even stupider to drown for. I think I need purpose, which I get from helping all of you, and making sure this won't happen to anyone else. Maybe, in time, 
the fog in my head will lessen. I hope it does. I understand wanting a purpose. I used to fight just for me, to prove I was worth something. Then it was for my friend Mercury, and now it's for Psy as well. I want to change the six realms for all of us. It's noble to fight for others, but count yourself with them. Don't forget to fight for yourself as well. It's not shameful to want to prove yourself. If you care about your life and truly want to stay living, to see the change your efforts will yield, you'll find that much harder. Hmm. That's good advice. Of course. I'm going inside to try and get some sleep. Uh, please, let me know if you need a confidant. You and I are the only night fairies here, and the only ones without wings. Night fairies? Yeah. Guess we are. Even if I didn't still feel indebted to you, I would like to make sure that you're alright. I appreciate that, and I hope you get some rest. I will try. Good night, Sa- Talia. Good night, Talia. Night fell upon the spring realm as Vandergray shuffled out of sight into the darkness. To night fairies, that darkness was a second home. The Realm Tree was created by Jumar Thompson and Julian Hermano and is performed by voice artists all over the world. To show your support, please visit therealmtree.com and follow our socials. Thank you for listening and tune in next time for episode 23, Reflections of Stone and Water.